Playing over the 12 bar blues progression isn't rocket science, right? We can get our pentatonic scale down, sort of know where the root is on the E string, hang that scale on there and go to town and get some real good early success. But playing anything even a little more sophisticated than that requires some focus and above all, a bit of a mind shift. Welcome back to the channel. My name's Chris. Today you will learn about target notes over the 12 bar blues progression. Now I've talked about the 12 bar blues progression here on the channel. I've talked about target notes. So why is this video any different? Earlier this week, I released a video on my Patreon page that was a deep dive into the BB box. Now, if you haven't heard of the BB box, it's really sort of an explanation of one of the methods that BB King used to sort of convey what he did as a lead guitar player. He really enjoyed this one spot on the neck and this one area of the fretboard that he did most of his, his best work really. But BB King was not a technically advanced player. He wasn't a flashy player. He said a lot without having to say very much, right? So how does one do something like that? Play very few notes, but get a lot of emotion out of them, right? Get a lot of musicality out of them. The answer is target notes. Now I'm going to explain target notes very briefly. Then I'm going to give us a little bit of a shortcut, sort of a way in without having to work on the whole thing at once. And then we're going to zoom in and we're going to put it right on the fretboard. So what are target notes? Target notes is the idea of hitting notes that are in the chords that are being played. Now in a 12 bar blues, there are three chords and we're going to be in the key of A. Those chords are A7, D7, and E7. Each one of those chords has four notes in it. That's a total of 12 notes. So how do you know which notes to play from each chord and when to play them? There's a lot there, right? What we're going to do is reduce that cognitive load by looking at the notes that are in common, just choosing a few of them, and repeating that process until we build the skill of both hearing them, knowing when to anticipate when to play them, and then actually executing them. Let's zoom in and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Target notes over the 12 bar blues progression. Um, this lesson is really designed to sort of strip away some of the noise and really start to build the core capability of playing target notes. Um, we're going to be in the key of A. Uh, blues progression in the key of A has an A7, a D7, and an E7 in it. Those chords are built from the following notes. Our A7 has an A, a C sharp, an E, and a G in it. The D7 has a D, F sharp, A, and a C in it. And the E7 has E, G sharp, B, and D. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of notes here, right? The cognitive load for me to choose these notes as the chords come by are pretty high, right? So what I want to do here is try to focus us down to a small subset, something like the lowest common denominator. And the word common is going to come in uh, handy here. So I'm going to start us off way up here. This is an A note on the 10th fret of the B string. I'm doing this for two reasons. One is I want to get away from this. I don't want to be tempted to fall into this and start to just riff on my pattern. I want to pull us off on a part of the neck where we have to really sort of investigate what's going on and we're, and we're going to be relying on very, very small pieces of information. The second reason I chose this is because BB King, this is called the BB King box, the BB box. BB King spent an enormous amount of time um, sort of anchored in this position in this key. In other words, no matter what key he was in, he was using the tonic. In other words, the root of the key of the song he was in on the B string and usually most uh, effectively with his index finger. Um, there are a lot of diagrams about the BB box, but let's just say for now, the way I like to think about it, I'm not a big diagram guy, um, is that we're anchored on the B string with the root here. Um, you can play a few different scales here and you can sort of connect all the dots um, if you wish, um, but we're not going to really rely on that too much. But let me just show you a couple things. Here's the A major pentatonic scale. Anchored on the B string, right? We're anchored on that root on the B string. That's A major pentatonic. You put the minor pentatonic scale here. You can put the blues scale here. Right, but we're always 
always anchoring on that on that A note. That's the anchor, the sort of meat of the of the position. Okay, so we've got all these notes, right? And our chord progression is A, D, and E. What do we choose and when do we choose it? Let's go back to that word common. Um, I'm gonna look at this A note. And if you look at the notes in our chords, you can see that obviously this is the root of the A chord, but it's also the fifth of the D7. Right? Here it is under my bar, right here on that B string. Same note, right? So I'm gonna use that A note over the D7 chord as well. Let me show you what that sounds like. Here's the A note. I'm gonna play very simply. That's A over the A. It's the root of the chord. I'm gonna stay here for the D. Fits great. And then of course back to the A. But now if you look at that E chord, which is coming up now, there's no A in it. This note works great over the two chords, but it's not gonna fit in that E chord. So I need something else. I'm gonna choose that B note. It's the fifth of E. And if you look, we've got our A here. That B note is only a whole step away. It's only two frets away. A, B. B on the B string, 12th fret, right? Let's listen to what that sounds like. I'm gonna keep the A over the A chord and the D chord. Play really, really simply here. We're still on the A chord. We're switching to the D7 here. Back to the A. I'm only playing one note. Right, I'm focusing on that A. Here comes the B. Right, very, very simply. But you can hear how that B outlines the E chord, right? Because it's the fifth. All right, so I'm gonna use those two notes. A over the A chord, A over the D7, B over the E7, and I'm gonna do a little embellishment, right? I'm gonna bring in my major pentatonic scale and my minor pentatonic scale. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna use that to help sort of embellish these anchors. the B. Just anchoring on that A. One more time around. Just major pentatonic there. Here comes the A over the D. Just phrasing back to that A. Here comes the B note. I'm going to bend up into it. As you can see, what I'm doing here is I'm building a very, very easy thing to keep track of. Using a common tone to just get my technique and my capability down, finding that other note, and just exploring those relationships, right? Now, what I wanna do is I wanna get one more note in here because that D7, that A note over the D, sounds good, but I wanna, I wanna have something else. I wanna have one more thing that I can put in the toolbox. And I'm gonna use that C note in the D7 chord. And here's why. I've got A, that's gonna work over the A chord. It's also gonna work over the D7. My B, that's the note I'm gonna use over that E chord. And now I've got C, which is only a half step above that, which is also gonna work over the D7, right? So I've got A, B, and C available to play over these, these chords. I'm only choosing three notes here, right? Keeping it nice and simple. Here's what that sounds like. A over the A. Here's the C over the D. Back to the A. I'm gonna bend up to the B. To the C. Same thing, little embellishments here.
just using a few different notes, right? Obviously, if you look at these chords, there's a lot of different choices and we really need to explore those. But the way to get started is just to choose a couple, write them down, use one of these things. This is a very handy tool um, and write them down and just stay in one position that's not here to anchor yourself somewhere where you can really focus on the notes that matter, on these target notes, and start to build something really melodic. This is the beginning of, of building the technique and the capability to be able to say a lot without having to say very much. Okay, by reducing our cognitive load to just a few choices and repeating that and building success with just the very minimum information that we need to play over changes, we start to build the skill and the capability to choose those notes in real time. And above everything else, we start to train our ears to really prefer certain sounds. So the next logical step here is to look at those chords, pick a few other notes, do the same thing. Like, what does it sound like when we just play the thirds, not necessarily the roots and the fifths, right? I've tabbed this lesson out. Those tabs, as well as the other video on the BB box, are available on my Patreon page. So head on over there if you want to grab the tabs. You can also get access to my teaching platform called The Studio, and there's a lot of exclusive content there. I'm also doing live Q&A sessions and running live courses. If you want to get a little bit deeper with me or just show your support, Patreon's really the way to go. As always, I hope you found this inspiring. I hope you found it useful. Stay curious, and I'll see you next time. Oh.